Good day, ma'am. My name is student nurse Abijun Balbantin from Iloilo Doctors College. And today, I'm going to demonstrate measurement of central venous pressure. So, but first, let us know what is the importance of measurement of central venous pressure. So, it is important because it can be used to estimate a patient's fluid volume status, assess the cardiac function, and gauge how well the right ventricle of the heart is functioning. So, central venous pressure is often used as an assessment of hemodynamic status, particularly in the patient's who are in intensive care unit. So the first procedure that we're going to do is to gather all the necessary equipment needed for our procedure. Next, next is to confirm the client's ID using two identifiers. First is to, is to check the ID band of the patient and then the patients in the patient's bedroom. Next is to provide patient privacy. Next is to explain the procedure to the patient. So good morning, sir. I'm student nurse Abigail Balbontin, and today, sir, ma measure kita sir sa imong central venous line, ha? Okay, na same, sir. Next is to wash hands to prevent infection, and then. Put on some gloves. Next procedure is to connect the IV tubing to the manometer. Next is to prime the tubing, then ensure all air bubbles are removed from the tubing. Next is to set up the manometer and then attach it to the IV pole. Next procedure is to connect the IV tubing to the central venous line. Next is to label the IV solution and the tubing. Next procedure is to set the bed on its lowest position and then place the client on a flat position or semi fowler's position. And then locate and mark the right atrium at the zero reference point or the phlebostic axis on the fourth intercostal space at the mid axillary line of the patient. Next, then check IV fluid if running well. Then, flush the central venous catheter to ensure patency. Next is to align the base of the manometer with a zero reference point by moving the scale up and down to allow the bubble to be aligned with the zero on the scale. And then, Secure it in place. Next is to turn on the stop cuff of the client. And then slowly fill the manometer with the IV solution 
until the fluid level is about 10 to 20 cm higher than the client's expected central venous pressure value. And then, do not overfill the tube. And then, read the measurement of the bottom of the meniscus at the midline of the small floating ball. And then, noted the central venous pressure at the end of the patient's expiration. After obtaining the central venous pressure value, turn on the stop cap to resume the IV infusion as indicated. And then, confirm the stop cock is turned on so that the IV solution port, central venous port, and the client's port are open. Then, place the patient in a comfortable position. And then, remove gloves. And then, Evaluate the central venous pressure reading and compare it to the baseline. Reported the significant findings and clinical changes to the physician. And lastly, document the central venous pressure reading on the flow sheet and noted the following. The condition of the catheter insertion site. The complications or the actions taken. That would be all. Thank you.